Uh, welcome to Do It For Media's Just For The Record. I am your host, Kamal Haynes. And today I will be interviewing the incumbent 5th District Candidate, Honorable Kai Reimer. Well, he is the current Deputy Premier and Minister for Communication and Works and will be contesting the upcoming general election on the Virgin Islands party ticket. But on today's episode, we will be asking Honorable Reimer the tough questions that need answers. But stay tuned right after this break. We'll be right back with more Just For The Record after this short break. Rashford made it, Manchester United have come from behind to lead. At home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live, select your package, and tune in. We now return with more Just For The Record. Welcome back viewers. As mentioned prior to the break, joining me on Just For The Record is the current Deputy Premier, Honorable Kai Reimer, who is running under the Virgin Islands Party to be re-elected within the 5th District. Welcome Honorable Reimer and thank you so much for joining us here on Just For The Record. Hey Kamal, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here uh, to answer the tough questions, as you said. <laughs> okay, let's dive into the questions. Firstly, I'd like to start with some groundwork as it pertains to you know, give the viewers somewhat uh, insight as it relates to your academic training and your professional career. All right, well, thank you. I, I started school at King Army Primary School, graduated from BBI High School then, um, 1993. I went on to college. I did an associate's in electronics, and then I did my management at DeVry, my bachelor's in management at DeVry. Um, graduated and you know came home tried different things and eventually started work in the public service I think it was 2002 I was the first traffic light technician and before we resigning and later on retiring I was the commissioner of the Department of Motor Vehicles so throughout the throughout the career in the public service I, I was a traffic light technician I supervised um, traffic at public works I was an HR uh, senior HR manager at, at Conservation and Fisheries, uh, deputy, uh, deputy Commissioner at DMV, and then eventually I left as a Commissioner in 2018. Okay. And, and what made you decide to become a politician? Uh, uh, Kamal, I think it was more persons reaching out to me. Um, I think they saw the work that I did. Um, they asked me to come and, and represent the 5th District and, you know, upon deciding, I, I put my heart into it and I went forward, I came forward and I, you know, I, I went up for election and I was successful and I am grateful and I'm thankful to the people of the 5th District uh, for their unwavering support um, during this journey. And, you know, I asked them again for their support in the upcoming uh, general elections that will take place on the 24th of April. Um, this year with the early voting on the 20th. So I asked the people of the 5th District, uh, my neighbors of the 5th District for their continued support. Okay. And my next question is, what would you say are your top three accomplishments within your district over the last four years? Uh, within my district, we saw the deterioration of some roads and we were able to do a lot of the repairs. Um, that came from um, after being elected and having the ability to see what the plans were, what, what projects were, were there in the books to get done, especially some of the road rehabilitation. Um, that, that fell within the $65 million scope. Uh, we did some revision there um, because we, the recovery and development projects there were over $800 plus million, so we had to do some revisions there. And we were able to achieve repairing some roads um, the, at Lower Great Mountain, Upper Great Mountain. The infrastructure was deteriorating really bad. I remember upon being elected, some pictures were taken and we saw how far down, you know, there was plywood. There were plywoods up um, so that it could be a, a deterrent from persons, you know, thinking that it was a safe road. But I was happy that that was completed, along with having some additional roads where persons were affected um, throughout the district. We did quite a few uh, road paving as well. And then we, we, we talk about people, you know, we engage a lot of the, the young persons within the community. We, we started the after school program. Every summer we were able to do the back to school program. Um, some other initiatives within the district, there was a new business open, the Bay Spot. Uh, we were able to sponsor the first cohorts 
of those students and you know I was proud when I was at church uh, I think a couple weeks back and saw one of the students actually in church playing the bass guitar um, you know we open a food pantry as well um, that came after the pandemic when you know persons were at home and we collaborated we, we partnered with the community uh, where persons would, would, would contribute and we were able to give back and feed quite a lot of, lot of persons within the community and you know some other activities within the community where we started basketball um, basketball competitions um, we were also able to repair some of our recreational sites um, sandbox park that was that was devastated after the hurricanes we were able to replace the equipment there and we went up to the watch house we we firstly repaired the roof there and then we were able to repair the fence so persons um, children and their parents would be able to play in a safe environment okay um, that's just the name of few okay and, and my next question is uh, what would you say are your top achievements under the ministry of communication and works during your past four years well, quite a lot um, i i think we have about a hundred plus projects listed and uh, uh, for me to go through them, I know I'll need a lot of time. But when, when we look at Road Town, we were able to add some, some life to Road Town. We planted some, some trees within the, the city. Uh, we did the traffic turnaround. Uh, we, we know what traffic was like before, and we see how efficient the traffic moves now. Um, persons would probably have a different opinion, but I think it's working quite well. Still some tweaks to get done, uh, but that that was something that was spoken about for years, and we were able to, to actually achieve that. Um, you would see that the Market Square has been reopened, and this is just all in the Road Town area. We were able to do some sewage upgrade as well, where we added some new lines and, you know, for other commercial buildings that are coming on stream, that we would be able to accommodate the, the system that we have on, on stream. We're also working with the Board Point Sewage Station, and we were able to start that project last year, despite the uh, cabinet approving it some a few years back, and that is slated to be completed um, soon based on all the, the equipment that would come in. Um, we have direct flights, should be starting on uh, the 1st of June this year from Miami through American Airlines. And that I think that is a, a game changer for our territory where we'll definitely see the impacts of that, the positive impacts of that um, throughout our community. We tried different things. But, you know, we have a, a, a named airline now, um, American Airlines, that this service um, throughout the world. And we are extremely excited about that. Um, just recently, we were able to partner with the Florida Cruise um, Association, where we are now the third um, executive member. Um, and we are hoping to see more home port. We're hoping to see the re some home porting uh, where ships would, would start their journey here in the BVI and be able to, you know, we'll see the spin-off where the supermarkets, the airlines, the hotels and so forth. So we are excited about that, as well as hoping that we'll have some summer travel, um, some summer cruise ships uh, within our, our, our territory. And <clears throat> we were able to pass the Water and Sewage Authority Act. Um, we understand the issues with water and sewage and there are some bureaucracies that makes it difficult for us to do quick repairs and you know we will mimic what is being done with BVI Electricity Corporation and hope to see that that utility company will transform and be able to be a bit more resilient and be able to do quick repairs and, and have the proper infrastructure in place. Um, we also did the, the solar farm that was signed um, um, that works, I think, started last year, um, December last year. That is another major project where we want to go green within our community. And that is a project where you'll see 85% of the, uh, the energy being derived from solar energy. And that would be a, a great benefit to the residents of the Anigata community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, my next question is, why should the people re-elect you as their fifth district representative? We'll be right back with more Just For The Record after this short break. Today, I am doing cover treatments with Beyond The Reef. We are doing 
Shark Research. So today we are doing whale research with Beyond the Reef. And wherever I go, I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited. Yo, everything good, Dad? Why? This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I host. I watch him bar. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. We now return with more just for the record. My next question is, why should the people re-elect you as their 5th district representative? Well, I think I have been the best representative for the 5th district thus far um, in terms of the achievements made, in terms of being a familiar voice to the people. Uh, we had a, a tumultuous four years. We went through the pandemic, but I was always present. Um, you know, I, I, I think back on all the, the dis different initiatives done within the district. Um, where we tried to bring people together. During my launch, I spoke about um, that love in the community spirit um, because we could have the best roads, we could have the best everything within the community, but if we don't have people, um, we would be nothing. Uh, we see how the community came together after the hurricane. Um, during the pandemic, where persons were home, we were able to go out. I, I partnered with the church. We were able to go and spread some, some joy, had some preachers praying as well, going through the community. We were able to, to give back whenever it's Mother's Day, when it's Father's Day. Um, Christmas, we, we did the Parade of Light. Um, we were able to go through and do Christmas caroling as well. And various partnerships within the community. Um, I am you know, happy for the opportunity to have been able to serve for the past four years. And again, I ask the people of the district for their support in the upcoming election. Okay. And when you say best in the fifth district, do you mean best of the candidates or best? To yeah, best of the can candidate that actually um, went up in, in the 2018, 2019 general election. And the people proved that by giving me the opportunity. And I emerged as a winner and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Okay. I mean, that question is, uh, what are your professional plans if you are not re-elected? Uh, well, I, I, I have various things that I, I plan to do. I'm a, a small business owner. I, I do um, various things. So if not elected, then I'll sit back a while and then, you know, reevaluate what would be next, spend some time with my children. They're both in college and, you know, then come back into the society and, and make a, a gainful contribution to the, to the territory. Okay. My next question is, uh, what is your view on the recently concluded Commission of Inquiry? Well, clearly the Commission of Inquiry went through the process. Uh, we saw where there were some issues that needed to be addressed. Um, from past legislators, you would hear that some of those things needed to be um, addressed for some quite some time. Um, the Commission of Inquiry um, did their recommendation and we came together as, as, as a House of Assembly. We were able to staff off the the, suspension, the partial suspension of the Constitution. Um, you know, still more work to be done. Uh, we are now on the right trajectory, and uh, I applaud the leadership of the Premier, um, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley, for being able to have those discussions and being able for them to put their confidence in him so that we, as a, a people, would be the ones to put those reforms in place so that we would have, based on, on, on what came out of the report, a much better BVI. Okay. Um, let's dive into a number of subjects under your current portfolio. Um, some you would have mentioned just now as it relates to some of your achievements. Um, let's start with the sewage, what people would deem as a sewage crisis in the territory. Um, how much longer before the issue is completely resolved? Well, 
um, we, when we, we signed the contracts for the, the Eastern Long Lock Sewage Project, I think it was in 2021, I'm not sure, um, we, we had some funds at the time, we had the plans, but what we, we didn't foresee, it, and we were speaking specifically, specifically for the Eastern Long Lock Sewage Project, we were able to start one project quite quickly where we tied in some of the existing, the main lines going to um, the plant in Parukita Bay, and we were going through the process where we had to go through the, um, the tendering process where Central Tenders Board would send out the, the tenders and be able to get the right, the right possible contractors to be able to carry out those works. And we did quite a lot. Um, we are now, um, I think we are now moving into where we will start the Param Town coming down into Lamu Swamp. Um, in a few weeks, we'll be signing some contracts for the lift stations and also for the repair of the sewage station in Parukita Bay. So quite a lot of work have been done. And um, we were able to do some upgrade from the Pazier um, estate area as well where we had the, you know, it's an aging infrastructure and, you know, based on the fundings available, we were able to just do certain aspects of that work um, in terms of tying in. And, you know, we have some, some pumps and other upgrades for the Rotong sewage, sewage station where I, I mentioned that we did a, a complete upgrade um, coming from where we tie in the, the commercial, build, commercial buildings um, into the system. And, as I mentioned, the Bird Point that, that was, is being repaired now as well, that has been done since, the, um, I think, before, right around the hurricane time. So it's quite a lot. Um, we were able to also complete the, the first phase of the, the state-of-the-art sewage project in Cane Garden Bay. I remember when, when we got elected, that was an issue, especially when there was the, the tourist season. And uh, you know you would have to manly, manually go and pump those areas, but now we have a state-of-the-art sewage plant in King Garden Bay, and the next phase of the project is now to tie in the households into um, the, the the lines. Okay. So quite a lot of work has been done on the sewage, and I mean I understand we understand also you know the water issues with that are, that are plaguing us um, throughout the territory with the broken pipes. Uh, we need proper pressure management valve. We need to do actually some leak detection, mm. excuse me, leak detection tests as well so that we can find out where these leaks are mm. so that we can have um, efficient and reliable um, service from our water, from our water aspect. Okay, I was going to dive into the water situation afterwards, but back to the sewage situation, um, we did see a number of works have already commenced, a number of plans are already out there. As it relates to a possible timeline, um, if re-elected, could you provide your uh, you know, constituents with some form of, of what could they expect in this next four years as it relates to solving this issue? Well, I, I you know, when, when we so signed the contracts, we were at the, the police station area in Eastern, and I said, you know, we have the money, so let's get this done. But besides the money, there are the, the, the actual, um, I wouldn't say bureaucracies, but actual works that need to be done behind the scenes in terms of the, um, the legislation and make sure that you're practicing good governance with how these contracts are being issued. That was something that was spoken about in the, in the Commission of Inquiry as well. And we were able to pass legislation, um, procurement legislation that we have to follow uh, to a T. And sometimes that could cause the delay in terms of getting some of these things done. But, you know, we, we have procured a lot of the material and we are now just processing in terms of getting those tenders out and evaluated and being able to assign. So there's, there, there are quite a few stages in there um, that I can't, can't say that I want to, give, want to give a timeline, but I know um, with the government and making sure that it's done, that, that would be my focus. Mm. So in other words, you can't say, for example, if re-elected within the next four years, that sewage issue could be solved once and for all? I wanted the sewage issues to be solved even before this upcoming election. And, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll work tediously, I'll work tirelessly to make sure that it is done um, once the Virgin Islands Party government is re-elected, because that has been a conversation, uh, um, election rhetoric for quite some time, and we're hoping that it would be um, completed. Okay. Um, my next question, um, you, you started to, 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 to touch on it briefly as it relates to the current um, water woes, especially in some of the districts um, across the territory. Um, especially District 3, for example, with residents continuously speaking about water outages on a daily basis. Um, why has this issue continued? 
and, and what are the plans to address this and what timeline can be uh, provided? Um, I start with the timeline. Again, I heard about the water issues when I got elected. Um, we, we got a team together and we were able to go and do some leak detection. I know there was some consistency within with water for quite some time. And whenever there's an issue, you know, these are man-made things and sometimes you would have leakage here, breakages here. But, you know, we have, I think we have done well in terms of, of having consistent water, um, to, especially more to the Seagulls Bay area. Um, I've heard the representatives spoken about it in the House of Assembly as well. Um, but like I say, whenever there's an issue that comes up in the Seagulls Bay area, we, we try to tackle it and every other area um, based on the limited manpower and the limited resources that we, we do have. So that is, that is one of the reasons why we, we thought it necessary to go and, and turn the Water and Sewage Department into a statutory body so that you know, we would take out some of the, the, the processes and you know, monies collected would be able to go back directly into some of the operations and maintenance of the, of the system. The way it's done now is that you know, all the monies collected from the, from the department, go, they go into the consolidated fund and you have to go through the process of asking for permission once it's not budgeted um, to be able to get you know, pipes and some of the hardware, some of the equipment um, even there's a you know a cry where over time for the guys and I myself have found myself out there sometime you know giving support to the guys midnight um, in terms of repairing some of the pipes and I just want to say that we uh, we appreciate the the workers of water and sewage for their dedication and their commitment to making sure that persons do have water when there is an outage mm -hmm. and we have heard over the election campaign so far. Uh, of a situation of it as it relates to uh, renegotiation possibly of the contract with by water um, as the rhetoric right now is that you know water wastage is a big thing right now in the BVI uh, what can you say as it relates to such we'll be right back with more just for the record after this short break one uh. yep that's me you're probably wondering how I got here my name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 out of 10. I know you got the service down pat. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually. <laughs> you're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. <laughs> <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. There goes my new car. Guess I'm back on my bike. Your bike? CG offers new car replacement. Remember my monster truck days? Well, one night, I attempted a 50-foot pogo double backflip. I landed it and went to karaoke. It wasn't until afterward that my car got hit by that fisherman. He gave me some great mahi-mahi, though. Anyway, they paid fast and got me in a new car. Now, call a cab. I want you to meet my alpaca guy. <laughs> new car replacement for the first year of ownership. CG Insurance. Good like that. We now return with more Just for the Record. Well, um, persons would, would speak about what they think would be the best approach. I know um, the, the whole plant would be ours in, I think, about seven years. Um, we are get, getting ready to start doing some training so that we would actually own the plant in 2030. And, uh, you know, then we'll be able to monitor the rates, manage the rates, the costs, and, and so forth. And, you know, hoping that we would, we would then be able to provide an affordable um, water rate to the residents. Okay. Okay, my next subject area is road infrastructure in the territory, um, which many have criticized heavily over the years. Um, what are your plans to address the roadways across the territory once and for all if re-elected? Uh, thank you. That's, that's a question that you know, I anticipated. Um, when I got elected, as you, you know, after the hurricanes, the roads were in, in, in the worst stages ever. Um, we, we then moved to purchase some equipment so that we can do some road resurfacing and, and, and do, having it done properly by purchasing our asphalt plant. 
annual paver, we purchased a milling machine, we did a roller um, and so forth so that we would have the, the proper equipment on hand so that we could respond quickly to some of the deteriorating roads. We haven't built new roads. We, the roads that are built now, um, some of them are built without drainage or sidewalks and it makes it difficult uh, when it rains um, that the road would, you would see the potholes uh, pop up in the road. I know since being elected, we have spent millions of dollars in road patching and road resurfacing, but we have to do it properly. Um, you would see that the, the Fishby Road, um, that was done properly with the sub-base and the sidewalks. And, you know, we have actually the blueprint in terms of how we plan to address the road infrastructure so that we could have modern roads. The issue would also be Kamal is to make sure that we have the proper funding. Um, we can say all that we want to say in terms of the road repairs, but we have to get the funds. I know the Premier, he has committed to making sure that we get enough funding so that we can do a proper road infrastructure. And when you look around the Caribbean and you see the amount of the, the money that was uh, borrowed to, to repair their, their roads, you know that a major investment need to be made into the road infrastructure. I know a, a road was built in Jamaica that was $780 million. Um, Barbados, um, St. Kitts. Throughout the Caribbean, you would see um, that monies had to be invested to make sure that these roads are built and built properly. Okay. Um, let's turn to the Terence B. Let's some international airport. We have seen some developments as a release as it relates to sorry to the increase in airlift. Is the expansion of the runway still an item on the VIP's agenda? What are the plans in that regard? Oh yes, that's that's uh, that's important. Um, we are in discussion with some some investors at the moment um, who are interested in in doing business in the Virgin Islands, um, opening various um, hotels, restaurants, and so forth. And they understand airlift is important, and we are in discussions right now as to how we would be able to achieve that um, lawfully. But airlift, in the absence of the expansion, we are having dialogue with many, many of the airlines so that they can have additional service come to, to the territory. Um, I spoke about American Airlines. Um, we actually just had a conversation with the, the authorities in St. Martin, where they are hoping that the, the St. Martin Airport can be a transit hub for persons coming from Europe. And you know we are excited about that collaboration. Um, we are supposed to be making another major announcement um, coming soon, where we'll see additional airlift coming to the BVI. Mm -hmm. And a follow-up question as it relates to, to that particular topic, um, the expansion of the airport. Is there any consideration, if not Beef Island as it relates to reclaiming land, what about the other islands that may have, uh, for example, Anigata, a lot of land on there that would allow for the facilitation of such? Has that been any consideration or has there been any consideration made as it relates to another alternative island to have a main airport if the expansion follows through? Um, through? No, well, we have the plans already um, afoot. Um, previous governments would have done quite a lot to make sure how the airport would be expanded. And we have the infrastructure at Beef Island Airport in place and, you know, the expansion um, could be done based on, based on the footprint of what is there now. And Igata, we are proud that we were able to reopen. I think it's reopened now for international travel as well as Virgin Gorda. So, you know, those airports are being used within their, their, their capacity at the moment. But the focus is actually just to, to expand um, Beef Island Airport at the moment. Okay. And let's turn to the telecommunications industry. You would have had that on your portfolio for, uh, following the formation of the National Unity Government. Uh, what did, can you provide the, the people of the territory as it relates to the previous mandate that was given um, to have some sort of evaluation done as it pertains to the, the costs and the services in the territory? Um, what did, can you provide on the telecoms industry? Well, it, the telecom industry is important to us. If we want to do business in the territory, you know, we see how important and necessary it is. Um, after taking up, I, I had conversation with the chairman at the time and the CEO, and we, we understand that some legislative changes need to be made, some amendment to the legislation, because at the moment now within the legislation, TRC has no, no power to, to speak to um, the cost of the services. Um, that is something that is just done within the carriers themselves. And I think that is important. So um, the TSC would have the ability to look into that 
and, and have a say in terms of what services are provided and having you know, some comparisons um, with other carriers. But what we see uh, within TRC, and we are doing some evaluation at the moment, satellites, they're the next big thing, and we are going through um, some, we are going through some actually understanding what TRC needs to do to be able to accommodate these satellites and actually have them legalized uh, within our territory. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next question is on um, motor, motorists in the territory, especially scooter um, uh, riders, uh, motorcycles, we do know that initially when you guys came into office there was a conversation of increasing the legal um, CCs um, from that up I think 125 yeah. to up to 600 CCs but there were no uh, discussion, no further discussion since then. What is the latest as it relates to possibly increasing the, the legal um, CCs allowed in territory? Is that still on the cards? Yes, um, what, what, what took place is I think it was in 2020, cabinet approved the amendments to the legislation where there'll be no, no, um, no actual limits, but there will be a two-tiered process where you would have to be able to ride for, I think up to five years before you can be upgraded to, to ride beyond the 125 CC. Um, that legislation is between the ministry and the attorney general's chambers so that that can be achieved. So that was something that we spoke about and we actually um, did the process through, through cabinet. And uh, you know, we, we made some amendments where we changed the, the fines and, and also to what, what is there for, for no wearing of, of helmets, um, safety apparatuses and, and so forth. And DMV would also be responsible for making sure that they offer some sort of additional training uh, for persons who may be um, old enough and would just want to, to ride, they would have to go through these processes, um, as safety courses. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's there, it's, it's being worked on, um, and I, I, but I can't say exactly when it would come and be able to get to the House and pass, pass the, the House of Assembly. Okay. Um, and as you said, it's being worked on, but there's no particular timeline, but it's something that we can, that the territory can expect in the future. Yes, it, it should be expected in the future because as we know the terrain is, we have a terrain that makes it difficult for um, the 125s to get up the hill. Um, we see where some persons would add additional um, things to the scooter so that, uh, this, and this is from the scooter riders, so that they can be able to get up some of the hills. But we have to make sure that it's done it in a, a, safe, a safe manner and we have to work collaboratively with the, the enforcers to make sure that the scooter riders are doing exactly what they are supposed to do, uh, wear the helmet. Um, you will know, remember that we did um, quite a few forums in terms of um, safety to the Department of Motor Vehicles, <coughs> going out to the community, speaking to the scooter riders to, to encourage them <coughs> to ride in a safe manner, uh, wear the helmets, have the scooters license. We even, the department even opened on, on Saturday so that they can accom accommodate um, some of those persons. We went out actually into the community uh, where we, we invited them to come to different locations where DMV would give you the written exam and also do the, the, the road skills test so that they can be licensed legal on the roadway. Okay. So those are some of the initiatives that, you know, we, we reached out to the community and encouraged them and you know, we, we encourage the parents also to make sure that your child should be 16 years or older, obtain a, a scooter license, and also encourage them to always wear the helmet once they're out there riding. Okay. Uh, I want to turn, um, I guess, to my final question due to time. Um, where do you see the BVI in the next 10 to 20 years? Well, we want to be innovative. We want to be at the cutting edge of, of of the, the actual world in terms of technology, in terms of our road infrastructure, in terms of investment. We're doing a great job with financial services. We want to make sure that we tap into our blue economy. Uh, tourism, tourism is important to us. It's, it's there. It's, um, you know, we just need to enhance the product and make sure that persons coming into a territory you know, have a safe and um, you know, less crime, crime-free um, community where they'll be welcome coming into a territory, as well as having additional um, accommodations where there'll be enough rooms for persons to, to, to stay at. Because we are going deeper into a cruise tourism and we understand um, six out of 10 cruise passengers, they return at overnight guests. 
<clears throat> so we want to make sure that we have proper place for them. And even when they come to the territory, we want to make sure that we encourage um, cultural tourism as well and enhance our different sites. Because we have a story to tell in our territory, but we have to make sure that it's done collaboratively. Okay, well that brings the end of our uh, Just for the Record with you, Honorable um, Regma. I want to thank you so much for responding to all the questions we would have asked, and I'm sure the viewers would appreciate each response. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And again, I ask my neighbors of the 5th District, on Election Day, um, Kai Reimer, we ask him that you give Kai Reimer um, your support, as well as the entire Virgin Islands Party team, as we work to move this territory forward together. Okay, thank you, Honorable Reimer. Well, until next time, I am Kamal Haynes. Hope you enjoy the content. Bye-bye. Welcome to Just For The Record, a political mini-series where Ron Grant, Kamal Haynes, and Jaco Wooding sit down with the territory's present and future leaders contesting in the 2023 elections. We're tired of the same old political talking points, so we're doing something about it. We've reached out to every single candidate to ask them the tough questions. For instance, what's your take on same-sex marriage? Every single person has the right to a private and family life. Everyone has their choice, everyone has their opinion, everyone has their beliefs. I leave it for the professional. You should have the right to decide. I'm not going to tell you, you shouldn't do it or anything. It's not for me to do. Marijuana. For once it's a medical marijuana, then I have no issues with it at all. I would support that. The medicinal cannabis can help us with many of the ailments that our people right now are suffering from. We have to make sure that whatever industry that we invest in, that the economics of it makes sense. The cost of living. We will look at all avenues and all the possibilities to ensure that we look at how we can manage the cost of living in this territory. Living in the BVI based on that minimum wage, I think it's $6.50. How can a family survive? It's, it's pretty high. Um, you know, um, rent prices are, are pretty high. Can we um, do something about um, the prices that are that, that, uh, within the supermarkets? and much more, along with the not-so-serious questions as well. I did drink a lot of guava berry <laughs> during the Christmas right. season. So tune in for the real story on all the territory's candidates running for office, just for the record, starting April 4th, 2023, on all our social media platforms, only on 284 Media.